Welcome, RTO superheroes, to another episode of our podcast. Today we have a special episode where the tables are turned. I'm thrilled to introduce our guest, Lauren Hollows. Lauren is an educational visionary and a passionate advocate for building better education systems and services. She is the founder of Anywhere Education Services, and she's dedicated to providing quality, compliant, and accessible assessment tools to educators. With a wealth of experience in business coaching, team development, resource development, and RTO compliance, Lauren excels at identifying ways to improve and streamline processes within the educational sector. She is passionate about using education to make a difference, fostering staff engagement, and enhancing business maturity. Lauren is also the driving force behind Learning Lifelines, a not-for-profit organisation aimed at closing the digital divide and providing equal education and economic opportunities. She believes in the transformative power of education. Today, Lauren will be wearing the interviewer's hat and will be asking me about some of the exciting developments and challenges in the vet sector. So without further ado, let's dive in. Hey guys, this is Lauren Hollows from Anawai Education Services and I am back with the lovely Angela from Vivacity and Katya from Hawk Eye Consultancy and we are continuing our talk on 4.2. We have already talked about fostering inclusive organizational cultures. I'd like to get into the next one with you guys because I think this touches on a lot of different things and that is ensuring integrity, fairness and transparency in the delivery of services. I think this talks to, obviously, to like all of standard two, which is like how we go about enrolling students. And I also mm-hmm. think it talks very much to like the fit and proper person requirements that have been brought on over the last couple of months and wanting to see more integrity um, broadly across our sector and raise up that profile of that. Um, so I'm really interested to kind of hear your guys' thoughts on this, where you think RTOs can take this, um, and again, moving past that, like that policy statement, you know, how do RTOs implement this and demonstrate this when it comes to like thinking about audits and thinking about, you know, um, you know, just just really embedding a lot of this sort of stuff in their organisation. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important, and and it is quite similar, you know, to what we currently already have and around the marketing practices, making sure that it's ethical and appropriate and transparency in the course development. So definitely still making sure that, you know, once you've developed your training assessment strategy, that the, the marketing material is then developed off that, that there's current or those regular reviews occurring. And, and even just things around like, uh, when I read it, I was quite into the kind of like ethical decision making powers within the organization and and how potential conflicts may arise. You know, you might have um, a compliance manager who might have one view of something and then the CEO potentially might not be listening. So is there any arrangements or support and guidance mechanisms um, to help that employee? And what should they do? And I know that ASCO have released their... They just released their um, hotline. So there's different ways that they're trying to manage that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think, yeah, just even having those discussions internally with staff will be really important. Um, If they are seeing unethical practices, even with business development people or whatever that might be, just to to be aware and really foster that inclusion and and openness to discuss it um, and not be afraid of it. I think will be important. So some of the things that we identified, uh, in particular when we did the pilot, is a code of conduct. So it will be like we already have a code of conduct because I've been around in the industry for such a long time and we I used to work with the old framework. We had to have a code of conduct back with the old framework. So I just kept that within our policies and procedures. But that I see is going to become a requirement is that every RTO will have to have a code of conduct. And within that, a code of ethics that articulates the ethical standards expected by each team member within the organisation. Also an ethical integrity policy that ensures the decision-making aligns with these principles within the code of ethics. 
also a access and equity policy that addresses the access and equity issues, focusing on providing equal opportunities for all learners. And I think with that, we'll be training with the team as well on what is the code of conduct and ethical integrity within the organisation. And then, of course, we're also going to need forms and declarations that these team members will need to sign to agree with that code of conduct and, and the code of ethics, as well as the students within the RTO as well. So there's going to be some changes to the enrolment agreement form and the employment contract that will be that will be impacted from this as well, unless you've already got it in your policies and procedures and your documentation. And I think, I mean, I think this is it's kind of one of those standards. Um, I guess that really does kind of flow through everything else in, in the way that you're addressing it. I mean, you know, I remember the old, T, you know, TAE assessor, was it TAA or was it TAE assessor code of conduct? I can't remember which one it was in. Um, but, you know, we had that old assessor code of conduct and, um, you know, it, the, the thought of kind of, I think just having the discussion within RTOs about like, right, guys, what does integrity mean to us? What does what does fairness mean to us? And I love I love the word transparency because I feel like uh, there are so many people in RTOs higher up that keep information keep so much information and knowledge nice. behind you know a shield you know and I see this a lot in in compliance probably more than anything else is it's mm. like I know what I know but like. I'm not going to share it with you because, you know, then you'll know what I know and maybe then you'll take my job. You know, like there's a there's a real fear um, that operates and I think that, you know, the understanding of transparency, like I work with a lot of RTOs where like as the, you know, the man like the management in the organisation, we actually sit with our trainers and go, okay, guys, here's like, here's how the funding model breaks down for this course. Here's what you get paid and here's mm -hmm. what it costs for admin and here's what it costs for this. And, you know, like we actually break out for trainers exactly what the costs are of the course. And when I tell other people that, they're like, you can't tell trainers what you're paying them of the course. And I'm like, actually, once you actually break everything down for trainers and trainers can actually see where all the different money is going, yeah. they actually kind of go, oh, okay, that makes sense to me. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, all right, all right, cool. So, and I understand, you know, as part of that process where I need to do my bit and why progression is important and, you know, why I can't open and close a unit in a day and or why I can't open up eight units and then leave them open for, you know, four weeks and stuff like that. So I actually think transparency in an RTO really fosters good business practices. Um, so I think that's, that's a great word, but I, I like the fact that we're going to see RTOs having more conversations in and around this. At I that think level. Um, transparency in any business, really, it doesn't matter whether it's an RTO or not. One of our values at Vivacity is open and honest. And it's being open and honest with anything that's happening within the organisation. And, and I know since I implemented that as a value within our organisation, I'm a better leader because I have to um, I have to also comply with the values that we have within the organisation. And being open and honest, it relieves some of the pressure off the owner of the organisation as well because you're, you're being open and honest about what's happening and what your processes are and, and issues that may have occurred. Instead of having to deal with it on your own, you're dealing with it with your team. And I think, yeah, transparency, I agree. It is something that all businesses should have within their organisations. And it encourages others to be like that, to act truthful and from to... The top. If it's coming from the top, exactly. It's literally coming down through and, it, it you know... It meanders its way through the organization. Um, but if they're not seeing it from the top, or and if they're not even understanding why they're doing something, that's so something that's so big to me in, in business and in RTO land. It's like why why are we doing something or why are we doing what we do? I don't know if anyone's ever watched the Simon Simek why. Yes. Like it's such a good video and we refresh it every year when we're doing our business planning. Um, but I think it's just a really good 
step to do with your staff is why are we doing this and and Lauren you mentioned it what does integrity mean what does fairness mean to our organization so that they're fully aware of that as well I think it's so important yeah I don't know if a lot of people do it <laughs> and I think I think it's a good way to link back to um to accountability as well um, I was I was talking with Dan Hill earlier this morning and we were talking about, you know, kind of learner support and everything like that. And he, you know, he turned around, he goes, he said, look, he said, you know, learner support's really important and it's really important that RTOs, you know, are following up with their students and they are doing this. He said, but it's also really important to have the discussion and go, at some point, if you're choosing not to engage with me, then that's on you. And so if you don't want to do, if you don't want to engage, then that's cool. You don't have to engage. But you know, at some point, the support stops because the engagement stops. And so, you know, having transparent conversations is also about as a um, as a salesperson in an RTO, as a trainer in an RTO, as an admin person in an RTO, as a manager in an RTO, um, what does integrity in your role look like? What are your responsibilities? What are my responsibilities to you as management? But what are your responsibilities to me? What are your responsibilities to our students as part of your role in the organisation? So I think, Angela, what you were saying, that review of like what your position descriptions are, what your accountabilities are, that's all part of that kind of um, how how we're going to see RTOs evidencing, you know, integrity, fairness, transparency um, within their business operations. Yeah, totally. Thank you for joining us at the RTO Superhero Podcast with me, Angela Connell Richards. Please take a moment to rate and review the podcast on your preferred podcast app. Each rating and review helps me fulfill my goal of helping training organisations around Australia to learn and grow in compliance and business success.